but I'm also a 38 year old real world fan. That's fantastic. I, I I've watched every single season. That's that's amazing. I, yeah. Especially that it has like 30 seasons. Yeah. You are definitely a fan. It's kind of creepy. I'll that be is, honest with you. It's a little weird. It's, it is weird. I'm really into this season of the challenge right now. Um, watch every challenge. You love Battle of the X. Yeah, so. Battle of the X is great. That, uh, I, I saw I saw the first one. And I was like, uh, it's a, it's it's not what it used to be. Well, now, now, as a fan of of, of real world, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, it's not what it used to be. Is no, it? it it definitely isn't. It's morphed into a really bizarre drinking game. Yeah. yeah, you know that's all it is. Is these guys get together, they send them off to these tropical locations, and they get plastered and fight, which is pretty. I don't think you're telling me about this. Like I didn't well, experience I, that, it that, that, I, Not just you. I'm just you very much, it to By you. the way, I, I don't appreciate. Know, that. I don't know if you know this. Can you tell me more about what I used to do on no, those challenges? Miss, I don't know if you know this, but we're on the radio, so there's people out there listening that might not know about the challenge. People know about okay. the challenge. You're right. You're right. Come I'm an I'm the, I'm the idiot. No, no, the, the challenge is great. So, yeah, it has definitely morphed in a little bit, uh, but I still watch them. I'm, it's weird. I'm 38, and I'm still watching the challenge in the real world. It's it bizarre. Um, <laughs> we got, we got to talk to The Miz uh, about your WWE career and what, how this has morphed into this amazing career of yours. Let's start from, I mean, the beginning. Let's start from you growing up. You were born in, in the Cleveland area, yeah, right? Yeah, Cleveland, Ohio. I was born in Parma, Ohio, which uh, is right outside of Cleveland. Um, growing up, it's basically a, a suburban area, average everyday homes, you know, and uh, grew up there loving WWF at the time. Right. Oh, and yeah. I love. Who was you your know, guy? My guy was Ultimate Warrior. Oh, I dude. painted my <laughs> face. I had I had the streamers coming from my arms. Absolutely. You know, like oh. I, you know, I cut promos like him. <laughs> you, know, you never yes. knew what yeah. the hell he was talking about. Was crazy. It was like, like literally load crazy. a spaceship with the rocket. <laughs> You know, it's like, what is this guy taught? Load a space with a rocket? What? Nice. I don't know. The warrior was great, though, man. Oh, it was fantastic. The energy. Now I want, but the funny part is now knowing the, the, the art of, of professional wrestling and watching it today, I still watch those matches and people are like, oh, it's terrible, terrible. It's like, no, the energy was incredible. It was the best. And I still enjoy watching him, him perform. Yeah. Like, in the ring back in the day. There it is. There you go. That is the ultimate word. There it is. is. And we you sprint, sprint down to the sprint down down, to the ring, shaking the the, the rope. Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> Clotheslining people, doing splashes. Like yeah. it was the greatest thing ever. You know, it's funny. If you ever go back and watch old wrestling tapes, you know, from like the seventies or eighties, it's almost like it's slow motion. Because you guys are so fast now and so athletic and you do so many crazy moves that it's it's kind of weird to watch. It's almost it's almost like you have to be yeah. nowadays because it's just your attention span has just went to hell. Right. Yeah. You know, right. and so you you really I mean you can't a headlock you know is all I used to do yeah. for half an hour. <laughs> and, 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 and the fact that said I'm like, why can't we go back to those days? <laughs> now we get a chance of boring and yeah. like you know yeah. and it's like great I'm just trying to tell a story here yeah. guys You're bear with happen. me. Right. So you grew on up in in the Cleveland area. Uh, were you an athlete in high school? Did you do like I played? Uh, I was captain of the baseball as well as the cross country team. I played football for a year, uh, but didn't like it because I didn't get my growth spurt until I was like twenty. Oh, okay. So oh, like, I, yeah, oh, it was brutal. the worst. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, I, I, and they put me at like tackle, and I was like hundred and forty pounds, oh. and like, and like, you know, like, and, and like, I'm getting tackled by like like two hundred and fifty pe pound people. Just, right. You know, it Somebody's just wasn't go to a great. Ohio State when they graduate, you got to stop them. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't a great. It wasn't a great time for yeah. me. But uh, so then I, I went to cross country, enjoyed that because I wanted to get prepared for basketball and baseball, which was my the sports that I excelled at. And uh, baseball I was captain of the team. We won our, our division. Uh, I was a pitcher, left-handed, and uh, that's about it. Did you, from, did you do from, any wrestling? Uh, no, actually. Oh wow! I just enjoyed watching it. But I, yeah. I sat in my sat in my uh, like my my living room with my friends watching it every Sunday because back then it was like ECW, WCW, and right. WWE every week had like a pay per view. Yeah. So I was like, oh, this is the best stuff ever. So I'd have all my friends come over every Sunday. We watch pay per views. Nice. So that's where uh, my my extent of, of wrestling comes. <laughs> your your background is is that. Yes. Now, at what point does the real world come into the picture? Like, do you how do you try out? What did you even? You know, what was that all about? Well, after high school, I went to Miami of Ohio because where I'm from. After you're done with high school, you go to college. After college, you go back to where you're from. You get a job, you get a family, and you stay there, and that's what you do. Right, that's right, the right. whole situation. So I was doing that situation. I was going down to uh, 
Miami of Ohio, uh, going to school, was in a fraternity, and I saw a tryout for The Real World. And at the time, like you, it mm-hmm. was like my favorite show. Sure. So I said, you know what? I'm going to try out for this. Now, all my friends were like, dude, you're not going to make it. Why would you try? Why even try? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, you know, you're not going to make it. And I was like, you know what? I don't care what you guys say. I'm still going to try for it. And I tried out, went through like eight interviews. Like these interviews are asking everything and anything about your life. I had to fill out like this form that was 50 pages long of oh, asking any question that you possibly could remember. What do you remember? I, you, you tried I, out? I tried out. Oh my God. San Francisco. Did. Oh, fantastic. Yep, Good for you. It. <laughs> I, went, I, went, I got uh, the, Puck the did, letter. Though. Yeah, Puck. Puck they, oh, they cast right. Puck, and I don't make it. Right. What's up with that? But yeah, so. I remember that. They, you had to fill out this giant form, do a video, all that stuff, and then you get to the interview process. And yeah. I imagine the, the interview process has changed from, from back then. I mean, it was a decade ago that I was right. on The Real World. So I, I went on The Real World, tried out, did the six interviews, and finally made it onto the show. Once I made it on the show, I felt like I was the outcast. For the first time in my life, like I, I, was, I was friends with everybody in high school. I was pretty popular. Not saying like I'm king, whatever, yeah, but yeah. you know, it's like I was a popular guy, sure. you know. So uh, going on there, and people were basically like, uh, I just became the outcast for some odd reason. I was just not getting along with anybody. It was Coral's fault. It was probably Coral's yeah. fault. Yeah. Let's all blame Coral, yeah. okay? Yeah. Let's all blame Coral. <laughs> so, so then, uh, so then I just basically created this character called The Miz that basically told everyone exactly like it was. I didn't care about any repercussions. So that's where The Miz was born. That's where it was born. Wow, I so didn't know I that. So I basically called everyone out on everything, not caring about repercussions, and if they got mad at me, I'd say, oh, it was The Miz. Right. So was you it know? kind of like a coping tool for you? Cause kind you, of. Because you weren't used to people kind of not being yeah. into you, so you're like, well, screw it, I'll create this guy, you can hate him, and then still kind of like exactly. me. But the thing is, they started liking The Miz more than they liked Mike. <laughs> oh, no. And I'm like, wait, what's going on here? Like, this isn't supposed to happen. Yeah like this yeah. and so then once I got back from the real world I, I, I remember to this day looking in the mirror going what are you going to do next and there was like an action figure of like the rock that my uh, that Coral and uh, all the cast gave me and it was like on my like mantle I was like you know what I want to be a WWE superstar so I went on the internet and searched like uh, the nearest like uh, wrestling, wrestling school, school. Yeah. And, uh, and I searched in Los Angeles and New York because I wasn't sure. I knew I wanted to get out of Cleveland. I had to get out. And I wanted to move to Los Angeles. Found UPW. Uh, so I moved to Los Angeles, paid my $2,500 to start independent wrestling, and uh, went to UPW, started wrestling there while I was doing the challenges. So oh, I was doing challenges saying that I wanted to be a WWE superstar. I was doing independent wrestling as well. Finally, three years later, uh, I, try- I actually tried out for Tough Enough. They wouldn't let me do it because of uh, MTV. I was already on MTV. Why are they going to let you on another show? And I was like, wait a second. You let me on the real world and you let me on the challenges. Why won't you let me on Tough Enough? Well, you know, you can't be there. I was like, whatever, fine. So I'll, I'll, go, I'll go still do the independence. Finally, it, uh, Tough Enough actually called uh, like for the season that they were going to be on the CW and said, listen, we want you to be on the show. Uh, sure, no problem. You have to try out with 50 other people. No problem. I have no problem doing that. When tried out, made it on the show. Then all of a sudden, like, uh, made it all the way to the end, and it was a fans' vote, by the way. The fans did not like me because no. I was on a reality show, yeah, yeah. and this is fraternity, the WWE universe is like fraternity. <laughs> we don't let anybody else in. Yeah. All these outside reality guys, you can go back, go, go do what you do, and we'll do what we do, yada, yada, yada. So then uh, I didn't make it. Uh, so you I didn't came win. In second, right? I came in second. Yeah. I didn't win. But the I, guy that I, won, I mean, he's gone. Exactly, he, gone. See yeah. you bye. Yeah. See you bye. Where am I? I'm right here. I'm still <laughs> still here. Yeah. Champion. So Come yeah, on. exactly. So uh, then uh, WWE impressed the WWE execs so much that they gave me a contract to go to move to Atlanta to be in their developmental territory. Oh, okay. Did the developmental territory for six months there. They moved me up to Louisville, where there another one was. They, these are gone, long gone, by the way. Right. Um, and I did that developmental territory until they brought me up on SmackDown and said, listen, we want you to be the Ryan Seacrest of the WWE. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Now, yeah. as a WWE superstar, you, you're basically thinking, you know, you're going through all these processes. You, you, you want to be the next, you know, Hulk big Hogan. thing. You yeah. want to be the next big Stone thing. Cold. You want to yeah. be the next superstar. Yeah. And they tell you, we want you to be Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> oh. and, and your heart just melts. Right? And you, but, but the way I looked at it was, you know what? You give me the microphone. You give me FaceTime, I will make it something, yes. and I will make it whatever it needs it to be. Your avenue they, they, in. Exactly. Right. All I need is an avenue. You get me anything, and I guarantee I'll take it to the next level. Well, and that's kind of did. exactly what you I did. did. Yeah. Here's the deal. 
Let's take a quick time out. When we come back, we got to talk about The Miz, about what, you know, he mentioned that it's a fraternity in the WWE and how some of the guys treated you in the locker room. It was a little rough. They still don't like me. <laughs> there you oh, go. No. We'll talk more with The Miz when we get back.